Now, uh, the next thing I want to talk about involves Spider-Man and conservation of momentum, and in particular the storyline involving Gwen Stacy. See, what I could do in my, I don't have to, I'm not trying to like explain how these characters' powers work, because again, they get a miracle exemption. So what I can do is I can take storylines or different scenes that illustrate physics principles, and I get to use them in this way. So this story takes place in 1973, in Amazing Spider-Man number 121, where the Green Goblin has kidnapped Gwen Stacy, Spider-Man's girlfriend, and brought her to the top of the George Washington Bridge in order to lure Spider-Man into battle. Uh, during the fight, she's, Gwen is knocked off the top of the bridge and plummets to her apparent doom. Spidey shoots his web down after her and catches her at the last moment. Then we see a little snap sound effect here that's going to indicate bad things in a moment. <laughs> he hauls her back up to the top of the bridge and discovers to his horror that she is in fact dead, even though he caught her in the webbing. And this was real, this is a very significant moment in comic book history because it was the first time that a long-standing recurring character, an innocent bystander, was killed as a product of the battle between the hero and the villain. And Gwen has the unique distinction of remaining dead. <laughs> <laughs> and in over 30 years, she has not gotten better. <laughs> Um, and here the goblin is taunting Spider-Man, romantic idiot, she was dead before your webbing reached her. A fall from that height would kill anyone before they struck the ground. Which, if this were true, the implications for skydivers and, and <laughs> bungee jumpers would suggest that there's this massive conspiracy of silence on the part of the aviation industry. <laughs> Nevertheless, comic book fans have long argued uh, whether it was the webbing or the fall that killed Gwen Stacy. And in 2000, Wizard Magazine listed this as one of these great you know, open questions. We can use physics to answer this question. It, here, Gwen starts with zero velocity and accelerates due to gravity and acquires a large speed. Let's say she falls 300 feet, which turns out to be only halfway down the pylon for the George Washington Bridge. Well, then she's going nearly 95 miles per hour if we neglect air resistance, which we always do in these problems. <laughs> we take force equals mass times acceleration and we bring the time over and then what we have on the right hand side is mass times change in velocity which in physics is called change in momentum. Usually it's represented by the letter P which stands for <coughs> momentum. <laughs> <laughs> We're rocket scientists, yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so you have a change in momentum here and the only way you're going to change the momentum to go from 95 miles per hour to zero is by either a combination of applying a force for a given time. And if the time is very short, then the force has to be very large in order to change the momentum. So if, say, the time that the webbing has to stop when is a half second, let's say her mass is 50 kilograms, which would mean that she weighs 110 pounds, the force then has to be nearly 1,100 pounds, or equivalently 10 Gs. 10 times gravity. And in fact, this is why we have airbags in cars. You're driving in a car, you're going to 60 miles an hour, you hit something, the car stops, but you keep going forward because Newton's first law, an object in motion remains in motion until acted upon by an outside force. That outside force is coming up in a moment. It used to be supplied by either the steering column or the windshield. The time was very short, so the force was very high. Airbags do two things. They spread the force over a larger area, and they deform under contact, so that the time available to stop you is increased. And you can't control this. You're going from 60 miles an hour to zero. You hope your mass doesn't change. So <laughs> that's, that's best case. <laughs> so, so if the time can go up, then the force needed to stop you can be reduced. And so this is the physics, the same physics that works with Gwen Stacy. Uh, tragically, the time was too short there, uh, works in our, in our automobiles now. Now, I sent in a letter to Wizard Magazine when they listed this as an open question, outlining, outlining these um, uh, calculations. They printed the letter saying, hey, physics shows that we're right. A few years later, in Peter Parker's Spider-Man number 45, the goblin is taunting. Uh, Spider-Man over the death of Gwen Stacy, claiming that he tried to save her 
but before I had a chance to reach her, Spider-Man did something incredibly stupid. Despite the speed of her fall, he chose to catch her with that rubber webbing of his. In the next instant, her neck was snapped like a rotten twig. Now, so it may have taken at least 30 years, but now the goblin realizes that it wasn't the fall that killed Gwen Stacy, but actually the webbing. I don't know how well I do with my students or the readers of my book, but if I can teach a homicidal maniac like the Green Goblin <laughs> about conservation of momentum, then I'm making a difference.